Hello. I have been experiencing some technical difficulties with um, space on my phone. So I archived old pictures and got more space for my phone. And now I can't retrieve um, pre-recorded readings and I'm having a hard time. So if you could pray for me, that would be great. In the meantime, today is January 11th, 2024. And we're picking up, starting off with a, um, whatever this is called, I keep forgetting. Commentary, that's the word. Ishmael is 89 years old when his father Abraham dies, and he will live for another 48 years. He will have 12 sons and presumably many daughters. Because the Genesis record will soon concentrate exclusively on the life of Isaac and his descendants, a last account of Ishmael and his sons is given at this point. Genesis 25 verse 12 this is the account of Abraham's son, Ishmael, whom Sarah's maidservant, Hagar, the Egyptian, bore to Abraham. These are the names of the sons of Ishmael, listed in the order of their birth. Nebaioth, the firstborn of Ishmael, Kedar, Ab Adbeel, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Ma Massa, Hadad, Tima, Jetur, Nathish, and Kedima. These were the sons of Ishmael, and these are the names of the twelve tribal rulers, according to their settlements and camps. Altogether, Ishmael lived a hundred and thirty-seven years. He breathed his last and died, and he was gathered to his people. His descendants settled in the area of Havilah, to Shur, near the border of Egypt, as you go toward Ashur. And they lived in hostility toward all their brothers. Commentary. With the death of Abraham, the Genesis record begins to provide increasing detail regarding the lives of Abraham's descendants and events are recorded at briefer intervals, whereas major events of the first 2,500 years have been chronicled as only a brief outline, the rem remainder of the Genesis record provides an in-depth look at Isaac's children and grandchildren. For the most part, the events speak for themselves. The people whose lives are recorded exhibit both the best and worst of human nature typifying the moral struggles which encompass the human predicament and pointing up the need for a God who can lift mankind above its own circumstances. The scene for the next 150 years is set when Rebecca gives birth to twins and is told prophetically that these two sons will be the fathers of nations which in time struggle with each other for dominance. The account picks up immediately following the death of Isaac's father. Genesis 25, 11. Abra After Abraham's death, God blessed his son Isaac, who then lived near Beer Lehi Roy. This is the account of Abraham's son Isaac. Abraham became the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean, from Bad Padan Aram, and sister of Laban the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife, because she was barren. The Lord answered his prayer, and his wife Rebekah became pregnant. The babies jostled each other within her, and she said, Why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. 
When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first to come out was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment. So they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel. So he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to them. Here's a brief uh, commentary. As Esau and Jacob grow into manhood, they take on individual characteristics and become especially favored. Esau by Isaac, Jacob by Rebekah. Genesis 25, 27. The boys grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country. While Jacob was a quiet man, staying among the tents, Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Commentary. An incident having extraordinary consequences is now recorded, which not only gives insight into the character of each man, but also has an important implications for the further descent of the people through with whom God has chosen to reveal himself. The event involves the transfer of the birthright belonging to Esau, the firstborn of the twins. By that birthright, Esau would stand to receive a double part of Isaac's estate and take over leadership of the family upon Isaac's death. Genesis 25 from 29. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country, famished. He said to Jacob, Quick, let me have some of that red stew. I am famished. That is why he was also called Edom. Jacob replied, First sell me your birthright. Look, I am about to die, Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? But Jacob said, Swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank, and then got up and left. Commentary. Careless and apparently disinterested in the benefits and responsibilities attendant to the birthright, Esau unknowingly forfeits his opportunity to be one of his in his generation to be the one in his generation through whom the blessings promised to his grandfather Abraham would pass. Esau's descendants will never be God's special people. In fact, pursuant to the prophecy given to Rebekah in future years, Esau's descendants will indeed be subservient to the Hebrews, who will be the direct descendants of Jacob. With reference to the redness associated with Esau's birth, Esau's descendants will bear the name Edomites and be a continuing source of friction for the Hebrew nation. As his two sons engage in fraternal conflict, Isaac himself experiences moral conflict in a series of situations which are amazingly parallel to situations experienced by his father Abraham. First, Isaac encounters a famine and is forced to migrate to Gerar, where he lies about Rebekah exactly as Abraham lied about Sarah. He is then blessed with great wealth, as was Abraham, and finally has similar disputes over the same wells previously dug by his father. It is interesting to note the influence of a parent and in a more general sense, the cycles of human behavior, which one can observe throughout history. Now there, uh, Genesis 26, verse 1, Now there was a famine in the land, besides the earlier famine of Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and your descendants I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and will give them all these lands. And through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed me and kept my requirements, 
my commands, my decrees, and my laws. So Isaac stayed in Gerar. When the men of that place asked him about his wife, he said, She is my sister, because he was afraid to say she is my wife. He thought that men of this place might kill me on account of Rebekah, because she is beautiful. When Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked down from a window and saw Isaac caressing his wife, Rebekah. So Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, She is really your wife. Why did you say she is my sister? Isaac answered him, Because I thought you might, I might lose my life on account of her. Then Abimelech said, What is this you have done to us? One of the men might have well have slept with your wife, and you would have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech gave orders to all the people, Anyone who molests this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Isaac planted crops in that land, and the same year reaped a hundredfold, because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich, and his wealth continued to grow, until he became very wealthy. He had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. So all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the time of his father Abraham, the Philistines stopped up filling them with earth. Then Abimelech said to Isaac, Move away from us, you have become too powerful for us. So Isaac moved away from there and encamped in the valley of Gerar and settled there. Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in the time of his father Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died, and he gave them the same names his father had given them. Isaac's servants dug in the valley and discovered a well of fresh water there. But the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen and said, The water is ours. So he named the well Esek, because they disputed with him. Then they dug another well, but they quarreled over that one also. So he named it Sitna. He moved on from there and dug another well, and no one quarreled over it. He named it Rehoboth, saying, Now the Lord has given us room, and we will flourish in the land. From there he went up to Beersheba. That night the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you and will increase the number of your descendants for the sake of my servant Abraham. Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. There he pitched his tent, and there his servants dug a well. Meanwhile, Abimelech had come to him from Gerar with Ahuzeth, his personal advisor, and Fickle, the commander of his forces. Isaac asked them, Why have you come to me, since you were hostile to me and sent me away? They answered, We saw clearly that the Lord was with you, so we said there ought to be a sworn agreement between us, between us and you. Let us make a treaty with you that you will do us no harm, just as we did not molest you, but always treated you well and sent you away in peace. And now you are blessed by the Lord. Isaac then met, made a feast for them, and they ate and drank. Early the next morning, the men swore an oath to each other. Then Isaac sent them on their way, and they left him in peace. That day Isaac's servants came and told him about the well they had dug. They said, We found water. He called it Sheba, and to this day the name of the town has been Beersheba. And that's it for January 11th. Have a great day. Love you.